Yo, what's up everybody and welcome back to another video. And it's me, they call me Heat. If this is your first time watching, I am a music producer of over 10 plus years. And on this channel here, I show producers how to make some of the best boom bap style beats. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, why do you work in double time? What is that for? Why do you do that? What is that gonna do? How does that help you, right? I come from the time of working with like an NPC, things like that. Although I never worked consistently on an NPC, once I got on an, an actual NPC, I understood the workflow, how you have to work inside of it, I and mean, how to separate things and make sure that they're separated. So one of the things was, of course, working on different tracks. So, you know, and within you got one program, or you have multiple programs, a bunch of different programs, and within that program you have a certain amount of tracks. The tracks are pretty much the pads, you know, the kick, the snare, the hi-hat. Some people like to put everything on one track, some people like to separate everything. Um, so that was one of the things that I picked up. Um, another thing that I picked up was you can change the timing of the metronome in the NPC. So let's say you're working at 60 BPM, but you're a dance producer and you like, you know, up-tempo. You can work at 60 BPM if that's what you like, and then you can go in and change the metronome timing to sound like it's at 120 BPM. I thought that was a great thing because for someone like me, you know, I make boom bap and boom bap usually resides around 90 BPM, um, you know, 85, you know, between those, those that number, um, that's where boom bap is usually created. And for me, I use a digital DAW. And within my digital DAW, you know, we have a metronome, but in that metronome, you can't change any settings of the metronome except the sound. <laughs> you know, if it's a tick, a hi-hat, or a bell, or a chime, or a bell, or something. So it's not really a change that I can do, you know, in there to make myself feel good at using a lower, slower tempo. So I stick to a double time tempo. So if I'm using, if I'm used to 90, I'm gonna go to 180. If I'm used to um, 85, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do 170. Like that's just, that's just how it works because you can't change the temp, the met, the timing of the metronome. You can change the tempo and then change the grid so that everything fits. So if you were at 180 and you wanted to go down to 190, I mean, I'm sorry, if you were at 180 and you want to go down to 90, you can just change the grid, the timing of everything, and it'll switch it back to make it sound like you're still at 180. You can't use 160 and then make it feel like you're at 120, metronome wise. But there are workarounds. There are different ways that you can, you know, do it. Um, I just like working in double time. Um, and that's just one of the things that I picked up early on working with hardware is knowing that, okay, if I can work at 80, I can do a double time or a triple time, you know, metronome if I need to. Also, the second thing that I learned from that is double time just helps me achieve a better bounce because I can, you know, I'm moving 80 BPM, you kind of like this, you know, I want to double it. I want to feel that beat. I want to feel like. I want whoever's listening to feel like they're, you know, they were there with me when I was making. That's just my thing. That's that's just what I like. I like that. I like I like the bounce that I can get from double time working in double time. Single time just doesn't give me that bounce. Sorry. <laughs> that's pretty much why I like to work in double time. And I'll kind of go in. I'm gonna go into FL Studio. I'm gonna show you, you know, the different ways now that you can do it and you can achieve it. But it's a tedious process. So that's why I'm just call it stubborn I guess but I rather just set the tempo to a 180 185 you know something like that 1 190 or something you know something like that um, 180 whatever it is I rather just set it at that tempo and work at that tempo rather than going down to 90 trying to change the grid change the timing of the grid make sure everything fits so that it feels like you're in that timing if this is your first time watching make sure you subscribe uh, turn on the notification bell as well um, yeah that way you don't miss any more videos. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let me show you just this simple trick. You know, it's going to be a short video, so apologize for that. But I just wanted to show you guys this cool trick that you can do in FL Studio to work how I work in double time. Although I will never use this trick. This is just for you. All right, let's get into it. All right, so now here we are in FL Studio. And I'm going to kind of show you... I'm just gonna grab a loop that's already made. It's supposed to be 125 BPM, right? So we'll put this, we'll set the BPM to 125 as he has it.
So we know 125 is probably 62 and a half BPM. So I'm not gonna do all that. So I'm gonna take this down to 62. And this is now at 62. But it stretched too long, so let's sh shorten that up because it's a slower tempo. Now we was at, what was that, 125? I was at 125, let me take it up and show you what the metronome, metronome would sound like at 125. Feel that groove? Like, I, I hope that you feel and can get that groove versus right here when I go back down to, you know, 62. Now it's. No, God, please, no, no. The vibe isn't the same for me. So that's why I do it. In, I would have did it in 125 instead of 62. Now, in my head, I could still hear the 125 because that's just how I work. That's what I'm used to. So I would. There's different ways you can go about this. So if you want to work how I would work in this situation, um, you would pull up your, you know, your settings here, um, go to your project here. And then, you know, you can now change everything to now be, see, we're at 4-4. Four, four. Because we want to work in a double time now, 4-4 four, four is, you know, at our normal, you know, tempo. We want to break this in half now, so we want to set this to 2 which will stretch the playlist out a little bit, set this now at two as well, and it puts it everything you know where it's supposed to be. So now we're at 62 BPM as if we were at 125, you know, um, or 124. This is a simple workaround. This isn't something that's gonna get you specifically working how I work in FL Studio, because again, it doesn't change the timing of the metronome to trick your mind to think that you're in a faster groove, you're in a faster, you know, in a faster uh, environment. This just tricks the playlist and the rest of the beat to kind of expand it out and make it seem as though I'm working in a faster tempo. Again, this just didn't help me because it doesn't change the timing of the tempo or the metronome, but it may help some. So you, know, you can change your grid to look and feel as though you're working in double time by changing the time signature here. Um, or you can just work in double time and just always be in double time. All right. Um, I hope this helps someone. I hope someone got some type of value out of this one. I hope this inspired you to go create. If you have any further questions, just drop them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them the best way that I can. Um, but I wanted to just show you guys how to, you know, you can work in double time um, or make it feel as though you're working in double time um, and why I work in double time and why I like it. My DAW, it just limits me to having to work that way because I can't change the timing of my metronome, all right? So yeah, I'm about to here. Make sure you subscribe. You hit the bell button as well. Don't miss any more videos. All right, let's get about this thing. Peace.